Today, I'd like to share a handy strategy to help with sight reading and an easy way of practicing it. It's all about recognizing patterns in music. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. This is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner, the place for returning pianists or indeed anyone who loves piano to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. If it is your first trip here, please do think about subscribing. Simply hit the little icon in the bottom right hand corner of your screen now and it's all done for you. Now sight reading is something many pianists find difficult to do and there are frequent questions in online forums for tips on how to get better at it. And there's certainly no silver bullet for this, it's practice, isn't it? However, there are a few key things that can really help us. One way, of course, we can help ourselves tremendously is by improving our ability to recognise whole swathes of notes at once. So that's in a similar way that we don't really look at individual letters when we read something in our native language, do we? We see entire words and sometimes entire phrases in one go. And one way of doing this is getting better at recognising chords, of course. Some time ago, I released a set of videos on how to get better at this, as it enables our brains to take in multiple notes simultaneously and translate them, if you like, into a single thing that we understand quickly. And another extremely useful strategy is that of recognising patterns. Let's think a little bit about what we mean by patterns first. A pattern, of course, is simply where we've got a group of notes that are arranged together in a sort of defined or recognisable way that we can learn to spot quickly at a glance. And perhaps one of the most talked about of these is the famous Alberti bass. This is common in lots of music and you'll see in pieces such as the famous Sonata Facile by Mozart. And of course, once we're familiar with this basic pattern, Wherever it appears in the music, we don't need to read the individual notes anymore. Rather, we simply interpret the pattern as a single thing. However, this is only one of many, isn't it? Two even more basic patterns, if you like, are scales, such as major, minor and even chromatic scales, and of course, arpeggios. Now, let's consider scales for a moment, right? If we have a piece of music where there's a long run of notes, and each one is sequential and there are no accidentals, then this is simply a version of the major scale in whatever key we find ourselves. Therefore, really, all we need to work out is what's the starting note and what's the ending note. And assuming, of course, then we know the scale, all the intermediate notes become obvious, so we don't actually need to read them from the score at all. And this helps us enormously by then freeing our mind to look at other things whilst we execute the scale in whatever hand it appears. We have quite extreme examples of scales, such as in the Sonata Facile again. We can see here there's a basically a whole package which is little more than a C major scale starting and finishing on different notes. With this in mind, we only really then need to focus on the left hand part whilst we're reading it, as most of the notes in the right hand are sort of obvious, if you like. However, with a little theory knowledge, we can actually take it a step further by recognising, say we've got one or more accidentals, and again, a set of unbroken notes in a given key signature, it simply translates to another scale. So say we're in the key of C as in the Sonata Facile and we've got a single B flat within a run of notes. Then this means that the scale is now F major, as of course the key signature of F major has a single flat. In fact, wherever we have examples that there are the same accidentals as we'd find in a key signature, then we basically have the major scale of that key. So here again, Sonata Facile, we have an F sharp, a C sharp and a G sharp, which are the same sharps as you find in the key of A major. And therefore, the scale to play is 
A major. As we start to encourage ourselves to recognize such things, then the task of sight reading starts to get much easier. However, often the real power is even where it's just a run of, say, five notes. If we can convert five separate pieces of information, so the five different notes, into two, so the starting note and the ending note, then already we have less to think about. Now let's think about arpeggios. Again, by recognizing the simple pattern, we can take in multiple notes simultaneously. Starting at the beginning, if our arpeggio starts on the bottom note of a chord, so we're in root position as it were, then it will show up in groups of three. If the first note is on a line, then the next two notes will be on the lines above. However, we'll then skip the next line and the next three notes will be on the next three spaces above. And of course, after that, the same pattern repeats. This can be a lifesaver when the arpeggio starts to go across multiple ledger lines above or below the staff. Once we have understood this, we can easily recognize different versions or technically speaking inversions of the arpeggios. However, the real beauty of this, of course, is that we can also use it to spot altered arpeggios too. So going back to the idea of the Alberti bass, the pattern of the lines and spaces helps us to spot quickly which bit of the arpeggio or the chord, if you like, we need to use to form our Alberti bass. I could probably go on for hours about different patterns. You know, we often see things such as runs of thirds or sixths in music. Again, once we know the starting and ending points, we don't actually need to read even both of the notes of each pair together, just one of them, and the rest then becomes obvious. In terms of improving our ability to quickly spot these patterns in music, I sight read daily and I use a large variety of material to do this. And one source that gave me the idea for this particular video, in fact, was the infamous School of Velocity by Cherney. This, of course, was designed to help us build the reflexes for playing at speed. However, when sight reading, we can actually choose any speed we want, can't we? So, and that means we can use it for other purposes. I mean, if we thumb through this opus, we can see that it's basically pattern after pattern. You've got everything from simple scales in the first couple of studies. You've got arpeggios in others. You've got things such as turns. You've got broken thirds. You've got fourths. You've got octaves and so forth. Let's take a look at the first study in detail. Basically, it's scales in the right hand. However, what makes it interesting for sight reading practice is that these scales vary from longer runs covering a couple of octaves and they start on various notes. There are shorter runs that are just an octave, again, starting on different notes, as well as runs where we go backwards and forwards on different parts of the scale. And then, of course, just to keep us on our toes, there is the odd occasional accidental where we can't totally go into autopilot. We also have the fact that everything is grouped in sets of four sixteenth notes, which quickly lets us understand how many notes we need to play in any given direction. So when sight reading, say, the opening measure, all we need to actually work out at the point we do this is what is that chord in the left hand and what note does our scale start on? And where does it finish? And we can see here it starts on a C and finishes on a C two octaves lower. We can execute all of these intermediate notes without needing to actually concentrate on reading each one note by note. And of course, with practice at reading, whilst we're playing this, we also now have the time to work out what comes on in the following measure. Again, we need only three pieces of information, the left hand chord, the top note of the scale and the bottom note. Even if we look at measure 16, there are only really two notes we need to work out, which is a starting point of each of these groups of four notes, which alternate between a C and an E. Measure 17, similarly, we look at the top note and the bottom note of each little run and we don't need to think about the intermediate notes. Study three is basically arpeggios, which we can simplify in our minds 
by picking out just the starting note of each one and letting our knowledge of the pattern take care of the rest. To give another example, study four starts off basically with a set of turns and then further develops the pattern as it goes on. Study 11 has broken thirds, study 13 has a lot of broken octaves. In short, I think you'll find pretty much every common pattern in here. I invite you to download this from IMSLP if you don't already have it in your music library and use it to practice some sight reading every now and then. Prior to playing one of the studies, look through it for the different patterns that you're going to need to play. Take note of the scales or arpeggios. Make sure you can quickly read the top and bottom most notes. Look at where both hands play the same notes together. Look at where the notes are the thirds apart or sixths apart. And don't be put off by the fact that much of it is written in 16th and 32nd notes. Just think of them in groups. There's no need to rush. The object, of course, of this exercise is initially to get better at recognising the patterns themselves. And of course, Cherny has other opuses that can serve in exactly the same purpose. So have a look through IMSLP and see if you can find others that you like. Once you get good at doing this, then why not branch out to some easier Mozart, Scarlatti or Clementi? The music of these composers is similar in that it's often pattern based, although of course much more musically complex, so perhaps not as easy a starting point as these simpler studies from Journey. If you combine this knowledge with, for example, an improved knowledge of chords, then you will find that your sight reading starts to improve dramatically. Give it a go and let me know how you get on in the comments. If you're not already, then please do subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. Don't forget to hit that little bell icon so you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching and look forward to seeing you very soon.